Hi everyone, it's Finn Joey here. I'm in the studio as you can see and today I'm going to make a slightly different video from the ones I've been doing recently. Lockdown had a big effect in that it meant I couldn't get out painting so I was confined to the studio quite a lot. Um, so as a result I've made lots of fairly short videos but I've noticed that although I've never had a high amount of visitor uh, viewing uh, numbers it's actually dropped recently. So time to shake things up and make a bit more content that's hopefully more attention grabbing and will give people a little bit more than just watching a time lapse with a bit of narrative. So today I'm actually going to work on a self-portrait. Um, I've taken quite a few photographs and um, I hate photographing myself. Um, I quite like working on paintings of myself, it's a fairly interesting process um, because there's no expectations other than hopefully the fun of painting. Um, so I'm working from photographs this time because I wanted to introduce some different poses and um, some different lighting effects. So at the beginning of the video I've included two or three um, photographs of myself which aren't particularly flattering. Uh, but I'm looking beyond flattering, I'm looking at light, form, pose, uh, something that's a little bit different. Um, some years ago I did uh, had an exhibition at the Bishop's Palace in Wells, and though I'm not very religious, I did a large crucifixion, um, sort of eight foot tall, of a fragmented Christ. It was an idea I'd been toying with for some time. Um, and in the um, exhibition the fragmented Christ was actually mounted on a cross it was supposed to be just wall mounted but we weren't allowed to fix the walls so it was a bit of an improvisation and the head was just a fragment of a Renaissance painting that I copied um, and I often go back to that because it was such an expressive uh, face looking upwards to, to the heavens of the, the, the troubled Christ Christ on the cross and um, that was kind of basis for what I was looking for in this um, so as you'll see if you can um, stick with me to the end I begin um, with the drawing and then from the drawing I take various tracings interpreting the drawing through the tracing paper in different ways to arrive at a drawing on the watercolour paper um, upon which I can experiment with watercolour. So there's an initial drawing in a sketchbook, there's the tracing from the drawing, then beyond that there's the first painting which is probably the most finished painting really. Um, then there's a slightly more abstracted version which is much simplified. Then there's a third version which again is quite simplified and then the fourth version is based upon the first version in, in the way it's begun in a very faceted um, overlaying of glazes and colour um, patches. So I hope you enjoy the video and um, I hope it gives you pause for thought about how you can develop an idea. I could go on and on and on with this idea in my own world of painting. Um, it's not for everyone, but I really think that watercolour particularly has, has taught me that practice is vital in terms of um, arriving at a finished product that you uh, can be happy with. You, you haven't got the luxury of painting over it and scraping it down as you might have um, with oils or acrylics. You can work over those more easily. It's a little bit more forgiving in that respect. With watercolour, you can't keep working over and over it without messing up the paper. Um, so that's my little introduction over and I'll be narrating throughout the um, videos that follow and I uh, hope you enjoy it. So here are some of the self-taken photographs. I just took them with my iPad uh, with various different lighting effects. I took loads of them um, and it's very difficult but the great thing about digital photography is it doesn't matter, you can just go for it. And this is the one I ended up using 
which reminded me of the fragmented Christ I mentioned. And here is the head of the fragmented Christ. As you could see, it was uh, gazing heavenwards with an upturned look. And this is the drawing that I worked up from the reference shot that I'd taken of myself. Uh, it's drawn in uh, Caran d'Ache pencil crayon, just two colours, two versions of red. So um, once I was happy enough with the drawing that it would give me enough information that I wanted to uh, extract from it uh, and the expression was more or less what I wanted to achieve, um, I overlaid it with some tracing paper. The great thing about this is you can um, select certain lines to emphasise different parts of it or you can completely go the whole hog and make it into a very faceted um, drawing. And throughout this whole process, I did two tracings from it, and I could do countless, and each time extract different elements or reverse it or uh, tilt it sideways. The wonderful thing about the tracing is you can reuse it if you cock up the watercolor, you can redraw it. Um, I discovered this while I was doing some um, animal portraiture, and um, I didn't want to mess up the watercolor. I didn't in the end, but it was just a great way of applying it to the watercolour paper. So here's a faceted uh, rendering over the top um, and I've transferred it onto the watercolour paper and here you can see the time lapse of the first painting beginning and it begins with this very faceted um, almost painting by numbers segmented um, approach and I've kept the palette very limited to um, Opera Rose, um, Rose Mather, um, I think there's a bit of Burnt Umber, there's Cobalt Blue and Cerulean Blue and a bit of Windsor Orange, that's probably about all I used in this painting because it's fairly limited to a close range of paints and um, I didn't want it to be too um, varied in colour, I wanted to keep it relatively close in tone and initially at least, using the white of the paper in traditional watercolour manner for the lights, so keeping some white spots and dots and highlights shining through and then gradually pulling and pushing and controlling and adding cools. Um, and my beard is fairly sort of thin and fairly um, closely cropped with white hair in it um, and I didn't really want to go to town trying to paint that because it was more about the, the eyes I'm referring to that picture of Christ. Not that in any way I'm suggesting I am like Christ, I'm not, it was just a reference point. I wasn't sure whether I would put a background in, but um, I decided it would be quite a good idea to experiment with some more colour. The blue of the shirt works quite nicely with the pinks of the face and the reds, but I thought a green might work and I wanted it to be fairly dark and faithful to the original photograph to emphasise the highlight of the um, the lighting on the head and so I darkened it down but it was nice having that green underpainting um, for the darker greys to come through so those greens were added to the palette as it were as I painted and there's the finished first painting and the drawing next to each other and um, I think it worked relatively successfully actually as a first hit um, but here's where things changed up and I decided I would try something different and try to simplify it and approach it in a more faceted, simplified way um, with an even more simplified palette. So I'm mainly just using cobalt blue, uh, I think it's cerulean blue actually in this case, and um, burnt umber and just the opera rose. And um, I've kept the eyes fairly expressionless and it's almost a completely different view a different way of looking at it. Um, I've not tried to make it look like myself at all, it's more about structure and watercolour glazing. It's got an almost abstract quality about it. So then we move into the third version, um, which takes on yet another aspect of extraction from the original drawing. And I'm looking a bit more at getting a likeness again. Um, only this time I've kept it very pale. I wanted to limit the tonal range somewhat 
and see how I could achieve form with very little tone. And the beautiful, beautiful thing about watercolour is you can be very subtle in your application of glazes. I almost see this as kind of overlaying layers of tissue paper, all of a similar colour to achieve different tonal layers and, and build up the form um, as I go. So there's the final version of the third uh, painting in the series. And as you can see, there's the drawing, the first painting, the second, and the third as a series. They're all A3, painted on Hanamul paper. The first two are on 300 gram, the second is on 200, uh, the third one is on 200 gram. So there's a, another pair of types of tracing. That's the two tracings that I've done. And I've used the more faceted first version again for the final attempt at this um, experimental portraiture um, series. And when I was painting the first painting, I quite liked the, the kind of um, purples and reds and pinks as facets. And so I thought I would actually do a much more finished version of just faceted watercolour glazes and washes without taking it right to a much more finished appearance and um, this is how I've gone about it. Again it's quite limited in terms of tone uh, and there's the finished piece. So here is a final view of all four of them all together so you can see the differences of how you can actually exploit one drawing and rework it using different techniques and approaches. Practice is all practice. It helps you to see things, it helps you to develop ideas and it's something I'm really working on myself. So here you stand back, you can see the variety of colours and different approaches and the difference in tonality. So there we go folks. Um, not exactly an instructional but a, a demonstration of four different ways of approaching um, the use of a photograph and a drawing from that photograph and different ways of practicing and arriving at um, varied results and uh, I quite enjoyed the process it was it was educational it's given me some insight into how to develop um, the same idea in different ways and um, and make the most of it and as I said in the video there's a lot more you can get out of such a thing if you if you keep at it um, which which takes a bit of dedication it's not for everyone um, but it, it certainly helps to have practiced a particular image over again I think if I did it again um, as a more finished piece I'd really have an eye in for how to develop it and take it much further um, so I hope you enjoyed the video uh, please like and subscribe and I'll be developing more as we go